Hey guys, so this is John here, Sub Zero Gaming, and today is going to be our first introduction to the 2D tutorial series that we're going to create. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to look at today at least, we're just going to look at the 2D engine, the tools and features. Um, we're going to look at how to animate simple things. We're going to look at how to cut our sprite sheets. We're going to look at importing sprite sheets and how to cut them. Um, and then we're also going to look at how layers work in Unity 2D so that we can give the, you know, we can set our layers and we can build out a level. Um, I'm not actually going to be creating any actual game. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to let you build out a level. I'm going to show you where we're going to get all the assets we're going to use. And basically, we're going to create different components. So, like, we're going to create a working elevator. We're going to create moving platforms. We're going to create collectible items. Uh, in the future, we're going to have power-ups. We're going to get into more advanced concepts of programming. But ideally for today, we're just going to show you the 2D features. And um, yeah, so let's go and get started. Open up Unity. And what you need to do is create a new project and set up the defaults for 2D. All right, and then go ahead and save it wherever you like. I'm just going to save mine on the desktop here. Just name it as 2D Game Demo. Okay, and make sure the setup defaults for 2D. And what this does is basically, uh, it basically says that anything you import is going to be set up for 2D. Um, in Unity 2D, we don't use textures. Uh, every texture that you import becomes a sprite. So 2D uses sprites. Uh, a sprite is just a PNG image, usually transparent. And we'll look at a few sprite sheets today. So what I'd like you to do is, now that we have this, we need to import some assets. So in the window view here, Go to the Asset Store, and this little screen will pop up. And we're going to download the 2D assets that Unity provides for us. So if you scroll down here, you'll find something from Unity Technologies. Go and click that. OK, and what we're interested in is the Unity Samples 2D pack. Go ahead and click on that. All right, and go ahead and download it, or import it if you've already downloaded it, and hit Import. And all those packs, all these assets will now import into Unity. Give that a minute to load. Okay. So what you're going to have is the fonts, example games, and sprites. All we want is the sprites. You can delete the example games and the fonts. So just delete those folders. Okay. So this sprites, uh, the sprites they give us is quite a bit. Uh, we get a combination of uh, different, you know, different bunch of sprites. Uh, and what we're going to do is basically we're going to look at creating a level with them. So to do that, what we do is simply you take whichever one you like. Uh, and for me, I'm going to use the sky background that they give us. So sky sprite. And what you're going to do is just drop it in the hierarchy. Not the scene view, but the hierarchy. And what that does is that's going to automatically center it on the screen. So if you hit Sky Sprite, it's already at 0, 0, 0. So this is going to be our background. So you can rename it to background. All right. And you'll notice that a few properties have changed on this. You still have a transform, because that's attached to every game object. But now you have what's called a sprite renderer. And the sprite renderer is how you render sprite images. Um, so you'll see here that we have different, you know, different materials and uh, options with the sprite renderer. So you can change its color, and then you see here that we have a sorting layer, which we'll get into. Um, and actually, you know what, we need to set up something. Go ahead and click on sorting layer, add sorting layer, and actually remove these. Go ahead and just blank them out. We're not going to use them right now. So you're going to see why in a second. Um, so yeah, just blank them out, go back to the background. Alright, good, they're gone. Um, the reason why we did that is because we're going to get into sorting layers and why they're important to use in 2D games. So let's go ahead and just look at this. So one thing you'll notice is that these are sprites in our project view. They're different from normal textures. If you click on them, the texture type says Sprite 2D. It's usually texture, but in 2D it becomes a Sprite 2D. And these are individual sprite images. Some of these images, though, have multiple images, and they've been spliced for us, or sliced for us. And we're going to look at importing our own images and slicing them ourselves. So what we have here is we have our sky in our background, okay? Now let's go ahead and add in a ground. So Unity gives us a grass sprite texture, or a thin one. I'm going to go ahead and use the grass sprite, and just drag it and drop it in the hierarchy view, and that will automatically center it for us. So now what you can do is you can just click that, and you can position it in your game view where you'd like it to be. 
So I'm going to put mine right here. And then if I want to drag it across, instead of stretching it, you just create another one. Uh, Control D or Command D if you're on Mac. And you can. And you can actually snap it too. Hold down the Command key or the Control key if you're on a PC. And you can snap it into that one. So here we go. So now I have a level. And everything looks great right now, right? So let's go ahead and add... Um, let's go ahead and add some, you know, like a, a set of stairs for us to climb. And for the stairs, I'm going to go ahead and use the ice sprite. These are going to be my stairs. So for the ice sprite, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that into this uh, hierarchy there. And I can go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and make some stairs. Just duplicate it. And if you hold down command and you drag, it will actually snap in a, you know, a uh, directional line like that. Okay, so there's my stairs. We're good there. Um, and now what we're going to do is right now we need to create layers. So everything right now is on what's called the default layer. Now the default layer is fine, but we don't want the player to necessarily interact with the background. So layers help us organize our game and we can create depth with the layers. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So in the background here, see this sorting layer? Go to add sorting layer and go ahead and say for, the, for slot 1 background. Now what you'll do is on the background here you're gonna set sorting layer is background. So right now what just happened is everything disappeared right? And the order in the layer of the background is 0. And If you make that 1 or 2 or 3 whatever it doesn't matter. It's just keep it at 0 that's the order in the layer that you want it to be. So that's our background elements. Everything else that the player can interact with such as the ground and the steps our foreground elements. Our foreground is our play area. So in order to see the foreground, we need to add a new layer. So you go to go and highlight all the ones that we want to change. And go to sorting layer, add sorting layer, and type in foreground. You can name it whatever you want. You don't have to do that. I'm just naming it what makes sense. Okay, so now there's a new sorting layer. Go ahead and highlight all these objects. And assign that sorting layer and watch what happens. Everything reappears again. So now we can do different things. So for the sorting layer, zero is going to be what our player interacts with. If I want the player, because the player interacts with zero, so the player will be on zero himself. If I want the player to go behind an object, like if I have a seat, like if I have a tree, or if you watch the video I posted on Facebook, there's there's two balls. You can go behind one of the balls and then in front of one of the balls. That's based on the order and layer. The order and layer is closest to the camera, so if it's 1, then you go behind the object. If it's 0, you interact with the object. And if, it's, if the player is on 1, then the, then, and everything else is on 0, the player will go in front of the object. So we're going to go ahead and look at that uh, just momentarily here. Um, go ahead and let's actually do that. Go ahead and create two... Um, there is an image in here for a beach ball. Go ahead and place it on the ground. So put it in the hierarchy view. You get, remember, you can't see it right now in the hierarchy view, so what do you have to do? Change its sorting layer to the foreground, and there it is. So now that we have that, go ahead and click on the ball. Let's move it down. We're going to position it right here on the grass, and then go ahead and just duplicate it and move that one over here. All right? So here we go. So we have two balls here, and yeah, two balls there. And what you're going to notice, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to enlarge these just a bit, change the scales. Okay, that works. Um, okay, so what we need to do now is they're all on, they're both on the sorting layer of foreground, and their sorting layer is zero. All right. So if I want to interact with that object, meaning I can kick it around or do something, I'm going to keep it on zero. But if I want to walk behind it, I'm going to set it to one for this one, and if I want to walk in front of it. I'm going to set back to zero. The foreground means I can go in front of it where I, whoa, it, it might be easier if I show you actually with a character. But basically, order and layer, uh, if, it's, if this one here, the second one, is one, the player will walk behind it. If it was maybe negative one, I walk in front of it. See that? And you can see there in the sorting layer, look what happened in the game view. So zero is what you can interact with, and you'll see how we, how we can do this. Um, let's go ahead and get our character in there. And let's go ahead and import our own custom sprite. So the character I chose to use for this is the braid sprite sheet. 
I don't know if I can legally distribute that to you, so I'm going to walk you through how to find it on Google for educational purposes. On Google, you're just going to type in Tim Braid Sprite Sheet. And a Sprite Sheet, guys, is just a PNG image. Doesn't doesn't do anything special. It's just a 2D image of a bunch of sprites. All right. Um, go ahead and click on this one here. And okay, perfect. Look at that. Uh, there's also others with probably more animations. Let's see. Yeah, this one has a bunch of animations. Looks like all of them, but I'm not going to use all those animations. So this one's fine for now. You can get this one. And let me just uh, view image. And here is the web address in case you can't find it. All right, so how do we use this? Simple, right click it, save image to downloads. And what you're gonna do is in your sprites folder here, you're just gonna go to your downloads and drag that image into your project. And you'll see here, Tim sprite sheet. There's the sprite sheet, it's just a PNG image and it creates a single sprite for us. So if I wanna be able to use this Tim sprite sheet, how can I do that? Because I can't just, look what happens if I drag this into the the hierarchy view. Uh, let's go and create them in the foreground layer. There's a ton of Tims right now. I only want one, and I'm going to eventually want to animate it. So how can I? Cut? I need to basically cut each and one each one of those out and make an individual sprite. So before Unity 2D, um, it used to be a pain in the ass to have to create uh, sprite animations. You have to have a separate sprite animation class, and it used to consist of anywhere between 50 to like 300 lines of code. It was a total, it was awful, it was just terrible. With the new 2D engine though, this is so simple. So go ahead and delete that from your hierarchy and click on the sprite sheet. And you'll see here that we have multiple sprites and we need to cut it, right? So check this out. Check here on the texture type. It's sprite 2D, which is good, but look at the sprite mode. It's not a single sprite, it's a multiple sprite. So you change it to multiple, and then what you need to do is you need to slice it, and Unity will automatically slice it for us. Go into the sprite editor here, which you'll see as an option. Click that button, and this will pop up. This is the sprite editor, and what you can do is in the left-hand corner, there's a button to slice the images. You can do it automatic, or you can do it through a grid, and you can set the coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and do this one automatic, and you hit the slice, and you'll see that these like outline boxes covered each individual object. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is you just want to make sure that each of them is its own. And you'll see here that some of them aren't. Like, for instance, there's two images here, uh, three images there. No, we don't want that. You need each individual one. So it's not always going to be perfect, but it's much better than having to do this yourself in Photoshop. So what you do is you just simply close it in to where it needs to be. And you can hit trim if you want. You really don't have to. And then what you're going to do is just click. Oh, whoops, put that one back. You're going to click in the space and you're going to create a new one and just put it around him and you can create the handles and move them up. I'm going to do that here. Hit trim if you want and it will trim it down to what the image is. So let's see. These are all good. All right. So here's another double. So you just fix it and then add another box. Just click and create. This green laser line will show up. All right, and looks like we have another one here. All right, look, these two didn't even get noticed, so what you need to do is just create it. All right, and you won't have to do this every time. Usually it's pretty good and accurate, um, but occasionally it misses a few, and I have no idea what causes it to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and just finish this off. All right, good stuff. So we have all these. Here's another duplicate too. And honestly, because these are, this is going to be the idle animation. I don't necessarily know that it really matters, but uh, just for consistency, you shouldn't keep them, um, you know, as multiple. They're individual sprites. Okay. And this looks like it may be the last one, maybe. All right, so we're just going to fix this, and we got one more to do. Actually, it looks like we have maybe a few more. Oh, terrible. Go ahead and cut that. All 
And it's okay if you actually cut a little bit off. We have multiple frames, so you're not really going to notice it. All right, but you want to try and get all of him in there. Okay. Good stuff. And let's just make sure all of the rest of them, from what I could see in, here's another duplicate. That's annoying. Okay, good stuff. And this one here doesn't have anything. Alright, looks like everything else is good. Yeah, you want to catch this now because the last thing you want to do is have to go back and recut them all again. Alright, good. So once you're done, all you have to do is hit this button up top called Apply. Okay, and X out of this screen. And you'll see here that Tim has been sliced for you. So now you can actually watch the animations by just clicking the down arrow key. So here's our Tim Braid here, and here's all his animations. So what we need to do now is we are eventually going to animate these, and I'll go over that. But what I want to show you is, here's our idle. Actually, our idle looks a bit split up. It's here, then it reappears down here. All right, so basically you take the sprites and now what we're gonna do is let's put braid in there so you take this first sprite sheet which is his idle pose how do you want him to start I want him to start in idle so drag that into the hierarchy and rename him to player or Tim All right now we can't see Tim why can't we see him sorting layer foreground and there's Tim okay so let's look at this so here's Tim here and we can actually enlarge him a little maybe two by two a little big. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right, and then I'm going to enlarge the sprite balls by two each. That works. Okay, good stuff. And keep it consistent, you can put it on Z. Okay, so here we have two balls, right? So looking at Tim, if you drag him in the scene view, he goes in front of both the balls, right? Both of them, because we're on the foreground level, which means that's our play level. If I added colliders to those balls, I would interact with them. So now, if I want to go take, uh, like if I want to take the second one and I want to walk in front of it, I keep it the same. But if I want to go on this one, I want to walk behind it, I change the foreground layer to one. And now, if I take Tim, Tim will go behind it, but in front of this one. So that's how we can use layers. Um, to increase depth and, you know, aesthetics in your game. If you have a tree that you want to run in front of or behind, set it to either 0 or 1. Or if you have more, um, you know, you can, you can do a whole bunch of things with Sorting Layer. But ideally, it's okay to keep everything on 0 for the foreground that you want to interact with. It's not going to cause problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and finish creating a little bit of our uh, level here, and then maybe we'll go ahead and animate something with Tim. And actually, Tim is a special case because we have multiple animations. Uh, we have Idle run and more idle okay so we have right we have idle and run with tim um it can be a little bit trickier to to do animations with him because we have to create transitions from idle to run which we have to specify in code so let's go ahead and animate something else let's go and create a spinning coin the coin that they give you doesn't spin it's just a single sprite so it's boring so let's head on over to google and google search um you know, Sprite Coin. And you get all these options. So go ahead and just go to Images and check out all these op options. You have, what, you, what you're looking for when you're looking at Sprite Sheets is a Sprite Sheet of multiple images that show the animation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick one that I found online earlier. Oh my gosh, don't know where it is. Coin Spin Sprite. All right, so, you, so now we got a bunch of them. Uh, I'm, I'm really only just looking for one that's really simple. Um, here you go. This is the one I found online. So look at this one here. This is simple. It's five frames, five sprites, and I'm just going to animate it. I'm going to tell it to animate, and it's going to look like that in the scene. So here's the address. I'm just going to right-click, save image to downloads, and then what we do is go to downloads and just drag that sprite in here. And you'll see here that its sprite is 2D, and its sprite mode is single. But we have multiple sprites. We need to cut, we need to slice each one of those. So what do you do? You change it to double. 
sprite mode from single to double, hit sprite editor, and if you hit slice, go to automatic, slice. And you'll see on this one, it actually did everything perfect. Cut them all just how we want it. So now what you do, hit apply, X out, and here's our coin rotation. So it's going to look like this in the scene view. So how do we make that work? You drag the first one, how it's going to start, in here. Rename it to coin. Now we can't see it. Again, why not? Change its foreground layer. <clears throat> so here we have our coin. And I'm just going to set it right here on top of the stair. And it's a little big, so I'm actually going to make it 0.5. Alright, perfect. So I want that coin to spin. How can I do that? This is where we have to create an animation for it using the animation editor in Unity. And it's very simple. The first step is you need, you need to open the animation window. So how do we open the animation window? You go to Window, Animation. Not Animator, but Animation. All right, and when you open the animation window, you're going to get this. And you can create animations in here inside of Unity. Now, the, what you have to do is you first have to select the game object that you want to animate in the hierarchy, which is coin. And then you see this red button here that says when you, it's a red button for record. Go ahead and click that. And it's going to allow you to create a new animation. This is going to be coin spin because it's, it's a, we're going to create an animation that spins the coin. So I'm going to name it coin spin. And then you can save it. And ideally, what you should do is you should, uh, you should create a folder for your animations. Uh, one thing to notice is that two things got created here. We have a controller and we have an animation. The controller is used by Mechanum. The animation here is, is what we're about to create. So let's go ahead and continue. So you click on your coin and now you'll see here that it's recording. Everything's red on the top toolbars and the record button is selected. So now we can record. So how do we animate that sprite? Well, it's very simple. What you're going to do is you're going to select all of them, all of the sprite images, individual sprite images that make up the animation, and you're just going to drag them in. And there you go. Now what you can do is you can don't get out of the record, but there's a little play the animation clip button here. And you can see there in the scene view that it's animating. Now it's obviously too fast, so how do we slow it down? Uh, the animation editor has what's called a sample rate, and you change that to say 32. Let's try that. The lower it is, the slower it moves, the higher it is, the faster. So 32, it's still a little too fast for me. So I'm going to maybe do 16. Okay. So check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe 18. Okay, so I'm happy with 16. I'm going to keep it at 16. Um, so I have 16, and it's spinning nicely in my scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end my animation. And now you're probably thinking, so now what? If you click on the coin game object, you'll see something was already added for you. The animator component, which is Mechanum, was attached for you, as well as the controller, which holds your animation. The controller is Mechanum, and inside this controller is the coin spin animation. It's what holds all the animations for that game object. And you'll see here that it's already added, and you see this button here that says apply root motion? This has something to do with gravity. Um, it messes up a lot in 2D games, and I'm not 100% on it, so I always uncheck it, otherwise my objects will float up in the air. So how do we... Now, what do we have to do? How do we animate it? Well, here's the beauty. If you're only animating one object that has an animation of just one animation, there's no transitions, like Braid has transitions. We can go from idle to run, but this coin has no transitions. It's just going to spin. It has one animation, and it's a spin. All you have to do is just play your game. And there you go. The coin is animating. It's as simple as that. So with Tim, though, it's a little different. How would we animate him? Well, you click on player. You go and record, create a new animation, and which animation do we want to do first? Let's do the idle one first. So we have two animations for Tim. We have idle and we have run. Let's go and do idle first. And go and save it in your animations folder. Okay, and you'll see here again, a controller for player was created and the animation was also. So click on player, and now what you need to do is in your project view, click on the sprite for Tim which is here, and you need to select all of the all of the idle ones. So it should be 0 through, okay, so 0 through 11. So I'm going to take 0 through 11. I'm going to drag it in here. But I'm not done, because look, I think there's still more idle. So yeah, I'm going to take 38, 38 through 47. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also 
drag them in there as well. All right, and I want them to be just like consistent with the other, so I'm going to make them you know exactly how the first set was. So now what I can do is I can play it, and you'll see there Tim is having a seizure in our scene there. So he's obviously moving too fast, so how do we slow him down? We use the sample rate. Make it like maybe 32. So it's still too fast, it looks like he's kind of hyperventilating a little. Let's go and make it maybe 18. Alright, and that's uh, not terrible. So a little too fast there. Uh, let's try 12. Alright, and I did a horrible job slicing these, it looks like. Some of, the, some of them are not right. But um, okay, so I like 12, I'm going to go and keep 12. So now I'm going to stop it. And if you click on player, an animator component was attached, and the controller that holds the animation is also attached. Uncheck root, mo uh, root motion, and if I play it, the coin is spinning, and Braid is now in his idle pose. So now I, I can go ahead and create his run animation, and you do the same process. Click on player, you see where it says idle, drop that down, create new clip, and save as run inside your animations folder. All right, and now what's going to happen is that's automatically going to be added to the player controller. So now we need to animate the run. It looks like here the running is 11 to 38 probably, 12 to 37. Okay, just drag them all in there, and there you go, Tim is running. All right, and 60 actually doesn't look terrible, but it's too fast for my style. So I'm going to go and make it 32, and that's a much better run motion. So I'm going to go and stop the animation. That's going to save. Alright, and again, the player still has it. Nothing looks different or anything like that. And if you play it, though, um, Tim is still in the idle animation. And that's because we haven't done any transitions yet. So what I think we'll do is for the next series, or for the next video, I will go over um, creating the character controller for Tim, and we'll go over transitions and Mechanum. But just to show you what Mechanum is, is we have to access the animator component. So this is the animation view where we created the animations. Now you need to go into the animator view where you can actually visually see them. So you go to window and then go to animator, which is down here, and this view will pop up. So you'll see here that this is a very visual node-based editor. It's for, it's, I think it was made for the artist in mind. Um, it's a very smart logic system and it's very simple to use. Uh, if you click on player, you'll see here that we have something called any state. And any state is just basically it's it's a it's used for transitions, uh, and we'll, you'll, we'll I'll show you guys an example of that when we do our character controller. But then you'll see here that you have your idle animation here, which is named uh, idle, and run here, which is named run. And these are the two animations that you created. Now, why is idle orange? Because it's the default. And if you wanted to change the default, you click on run, right click, set as default. But we want the idle one to be default. When the game starts, what do you want him to be in? Idle. So eventually, what we're gonna do is we will be creating. Uh, logic for transitions to go from idle to run and the way you create a transition is by right clicking make transition and you get this line that you can attach to anything so for run and run and if you go from idle to run you also need to go from run to idle so you would create a transition you click on the animation make transition right click make tra transition and then you would go to idle again so now these two can interchange between each other and eventually what we'll do is when you click these transitions you get this little inspector window here, and you create logic for how the transitions should work. So how do we create that logic? You create it through parameters, which are down here in the left. You have four types of parameters. You have a float, int, bool, and trigger. Um, trigger is almost like a bool. It works very similar. Um, and we, we'll, I don't know if necessarily we'll use trigger, but you'll, uh, we'll, we'll go over examples with it. Um, you'll see here, though, the float and int ones. Those are used for special cases like, uh, you know, like relative movement of the player, like checking the speed. So like with idle, it would make sense that we'd have a float value because if we have, you know, if our idle, when, when should we not be idle? When the player is moving, right? So if we have a speed parameter that we created of type float, we can check to see if speed is greater than or equal to zero. And if it is, then we can transition to run. If it's less than zero or less than 0 0.1 or whatever, then we can transition to idle. And we'll do that when we create the character controller in the next lesson. Um, one thing to know here as well is we have what's called layers. And basically, layers allow you to... Um, 
I'm sorry. Uh, layers are basically a way to have multiple state machines for one object. We're not going to be using that in this series, but um, you can check it out on the scripting reference if you're interested in what that is. So one thing to note about parameters is that they take they're used for conditions on the transitions for the animations. A parameter is a value or a trigger for our state machine. When should we, we create logic for when we should transition. And again, I want to show you one more thing on this transition here, is you'll see here that we have conditions that we can set. Exit time just means that it's a valid animation and it has an exit time. You can actually play it and it will go from exit to idle run, stuff like that. So it's just a valid animation. If you created a parameter, like say float, and if I created speed, all right, and it's a set, it, keep it at zero, zero. What you can do now is I can say, when do I want to go from idle to run? I can say conditions here, speed, and it's very simple. It's an if statement. If speed, which is 0.0, .0 is greater than zero, then I want to go to run. And you can actually play that logic in the view here. I'm staying greater than zero, I go to run. So again, you have to create that transition for run to idle. You go to speed, and when should I go back to idle? If speed is less than zero, and you can play it, and it will stop. You go from running, stop. So it's just simple if statements. It's just simple visual logic. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and use that when we uh, script our character controller in the next lesson. But um, yeah, no. So we're going to create transitions for our player. But for now, you should know how to slice animations, um, your sprite sheets. You should know how to animate simple stuff like the coin. And if you want, for practice, you can find a key image online, a key sprite, and you can animate that. Uh, in the next session, guys, what we'll do is we will create a character controller, we'll get more into Mechanome, and we'll start getting into code. Uh, if you'd like, what you can do is you can start setting up a level that you'd like. Um, for me, all I'm going to do, guys, is just create some a few steps, and I'm also going to go in here and just uh, maybe create a platform um, for me to walk on so I can have an elevator working and stuff like that. But... Yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this and looking forward to the next one. Bye.